I had longed to be, to minister as a priest for all the years that I studied in Rome, where I was often the only woman in the class, and there were a lot of seminarians, and I kept going to ordinations and ordinations and ordinations, and I was sitting in the benches. And no matter how highly qualified I was or how good my grades were, as a woman I was excluded. Then I taught in the seminary in Pretoria in South Africa for seven years, and once again, there was constant discrimination against me. I got very tired of it. We are tired of giving in. And we have decided, as in South Africa, where we decided as a Dominican community to break what was an unjust law and open, for example, our schools to all races. We suffered for that, but we got through it. And together with the, the sanctions from the United States, which were very good, they really put a huge amount of pressure on our South African government. But with the inside pressure of people like Nelson Mandela, who is a magnificent human being, and some of us little pipsqueaks doing our little tiny bit, everybody does their little bit, and in the end, the system has broken down. That has given me such hope for breaking down the system of injustice in the church, which discriminates so terribly against women, and says that women cannot image Christ. That came out, as you know, in um, Inter in Signiores, uh, that was Paul VI, one of his encyclicals, where he said, women cannot be ordained because they cannot stand in persona Christi. Women cannot image Christ. And we need to stand against that. Consciously create a different communitarian model. We are re-imaging, re-modeling priesthood, ordained ministry, and in the end, I don't want to claim too much for us, but a part of the whole changing of the church, like the yeast. The people in the church are coming to believe and rising up to proclaim that God is calling both women and men to the ministry of priesthood. Our model of priesthood is closely tied up with our model of church. We need to recapture the emphasis of Vatican II on local church, on issues such as the collegiality of the bishops, and on the teaching about primacy of conscience. The model of church that I think is most suitable for the women priests group of which I am a member would be church as communion. Church as communion. A participatory model of church where leadership is not limited to the ordained. In fact, as I will tell you, we are setting up our structures now, and in each region, we are putting in place an administrator and who will work with the team and the people in the region, and somebody else will be an uh, ordained bishop. The bishop does not carry the authority, and that's very important. The bishop has a different sacramental function does share the leadership function, but doesn't make all the, all the decisions, doesn't make most of the big decisions. I do not believe, as some of the highly respected feminist theologians, whom I deeply respect, uh, say, they believe that uh, our getting ordained is a sellout to clericalism. And I don't believe that is true, because instead of moving into the old clerical model, we are deliberately and consciously and with much difficulty and mess building a new model of priesthood. Angela Bonavolia expresses this very well. She says in her book, I hope you've read it, Good Catholic Girls, it's wonderful. She says, I believe that the ordination of women as deacons, priests and bishops is essential if the church is to recognize women's spiritual authority and moral agency, and if it is to ensure women's equal claim to ecclesial power and influence. I firmly believe that. 